up, bruh. I said it. Look up. But I just gotta know one thing. Are you ready? No! I said! Outside of Philadelphia, welcome to the 2017 Week Three edition of the Fourth and John Podcast. Hey, 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 hey listen, hey. guys, boys, and girls, we are coming off of a loss, a tough loss against the Kansas City Chief, Chiefs out there in Arrowhead. And I know a lot of you were upset, a lot of you were angry, a lot of you are still feeling the pain from that loss right there. But do not let this cloud the fact. That we have the opportunity next week, Sunday, Lincoln Financial Field, the home opener, to put the New York Giants down 0-3 and end their season before it even freaking begins. I understand the anger, boys and girls. I I, I get it. Why are you upset? Why? Because it was a winnable game. Arguably, we should have won the game, but know this that we can now hang with some of the best teams in the AFC, and now it's time to come home and take it to the NFC and take care of our own backyard in the NFC East. But first thing I want to do is kick it over to my man to my left, Mr. Gail Saunders. How are you feeling now that overreaction Monday is over? It's Tuesday. We're looking at the Giants. How are you feeling, I'm not angry. I'm not mad. I'm, I'm just feeling kind of basic right now. Uh, I really You're feeling want. Basic. I'm feeling basic right now. I, I wanted that W so bad, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, you go on the road, you, you turn the ball over, you throw an interception, you miss a field goal. You can't have those mistakes on the road. I mean, obviously, we wanted that W. Uh, it was good to see them stick in there, and we we saw something in Wentz again for the second week in a row. We have a franchise quarterback, and at, at the end of the day, that that made me sleep at night. Yeah, we, we definitely saw something from Wentz, and we should have saw, saw something from Wentz, considering the amount of times that he was slinging the ball and Doug Peterson wasn't running. Trust me, we, we will get into that. Next up, my boy running the social media accounts for 4th and John, Philly Mike. What's happening, baby? What's going on, brother? All right, you guys can hit us up on Facebook at 4th and John or at 4th and John on Instagram or at 4th and John on Twitter. I'm going to <laughs> preach what everybody's been saying. <laughs> I'm going to preach what everybody's been saying on Twitter. What the hell is going on with our run game? Okay, 13 rushing attempts the whole entire game. And Doug pretty much banned it when it was tied 13-13. Sproles was doing his job. He had 10 attempts for 48 yards, almost 5 yards a carry. Why did you abandon the run when it was working? I just don't understand that. And I saw on uh, that uh, there was uh, two fans that were holding out signs. Uh, saying <laughs> run the ball right in front yeah. of the Novacare complex. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know about that one. <laughs> Douchebags. <laughs> I'm like, Douche oh, bags, those man. guys. L- listen, I, I hate to call somebody an attention whore, you know, uh, uh, coming from me, you know, my hypocrisy only goes so far. But they, we, yeah, it's too early in the season. It's only week two for sign. We Come don't need to spray paint. Yeah, we don't, we don't need the signs outside of Novacare Complex yet. Give it some time. We got my man Evan Bubblegum here working the soundboard, but he's off to the side right now because in studio we have a very special guest, and I am so thrilled to have her at the new media studios. You can hear her on the Mike Missinelli Show on <laughs> 97.5 The Fanatic. You can hear her on Saturdays on 610 AM. Yes. The beautiful, the talented Miss Natalie Eganoff. How are you this evening? Well, I'm okay. You know, I'm feeling the loss just like you guys are. But uh, to your point, E, when you were talking about how it now shows that we can hang with the best teams in the league, the Chiefs are legitimately Super Bowl contenders. And without those three turnovers, right. it would have been a different game. We, you know, it, it came down. It came down to that hail mary. You thought that game was over, and then you're standing there in front of your television, and you're like, "Oh my God, here it goes." Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I agree with uh, Mike's point about the rushing, the rushing game, the uh, the running game. I, I don't know what happened to it. I don't know why Doug decided that in week two he was going to just pass the ball, and our quarterback can't be passing the ball 85 times no. to 
two games right. into the season. Uh, and I think it's funny that Zach Ertz spoke to that after the game and said, you know, like, we can't do, we can't do this to our guy. We can't do this to Carson. Uh, we have to run the ball. And I know that there is a little bit of discrepancy. And because Sproles fumbled the ball on Sunday, I think that maybe that's why Doug was so hesitant to – run the ball again, but you, you can't. You can't rely on Carson. He hasn't developed with a chemistry with the wide receivers yet. I mm-hmm. think that that's enough to rely on him to pass the ball that much. And, and we have that Zach Ertz audio right now for you. Uh, I got to do a better job finishing in the run game. It's going to be a point of emphasis for me this week. Uh, I didn't have a great game. Um, I got a lot to improve on, and I'm excited about having the opportunity to improve on it. Does that have to happen to establish the run game? To take yeah, I mean, off yeah. And then... he can't be throwing the ball 40 times in a game. I don't know what, how many passes did he throw today. 46. 46. Yeah, I mean, that's not ideal. Low 30s is probably where you want him at. 30-30, um, 30, 30, 30, run, 30 runs, 30 passes if you're going to get 60 plays. And, and, and Zach makes an excellent point. The problem is it's coming from a player. I mean, this early in the season for a player, I don't want to say he got goaded into the question, but to willingly start talking about the play calling, that's a little bit of a concern. But Doug Peterson called the least amount of run plays in his 18-game sample size in the NFL as a head coach, and it's concerning. I, I listened to Brian Westbrook and Mikey Miss ta- mm-hmm. talking about it. And it has a lot to do with personnel packages. Yep. They didn't run in, want to run into the teeth of what Kansas City was doing right, right there. Right, right. But that doesn't mean that you abandoned, abandoned, completely. You abandoned no. it completely. I threw out a stat earlier, and I have to look at it. My boy Justin Trox right now, he's filming for YouTube. But it had to do with the win-loss ratio as far as the how many times you ran the ball. And it was clear-cut that the Eagles simply had a better record when they ran the ball over 25 times. 25 times, which, by the way, according to last year, was in the middle of the pack. The number 16th-ranked team in the NFL ran the ball, on average, 25 times per game. We're not asking for Rex Ryan ground and pound here, defense and just, you know, two yards and a cloud of dust. We don't need that. Some balance, maybe? But some balance would do this offense a whole lot of good. Look at Andy Reid. He, he, the running game in general was not doing well at all. I believe Hunt had like uh, nine carries for eight yards until he had that 52 or 53-yard run that got the touchdown. Even though they were stuck in the running game, Andy kept going with the run game no matter what. And I, it just questions you, why doesn't Dougie P do the same thing? Yeah. 13 rushing attempts? I mean, come on. Uh, Carson Wentz is on pace to throw uh, 60, 690 times. Uh, it's too much. Yeah, and last season, 607 times, which was the second highest by rookie ever. I saw I saw uh, someone comment and say that he's going to need Tommy John's uh, surgery by <laughs> Halloween because he's just getting out there. It's It's... It's a concern. I think that that's a legitimate concern that we should have is that, Doug, again, to your point, E, that there's no balance and there needs to be a balance and he can't be putting all this pressure on his quarterback right now, especially when he still hasn't developed with the receivers. In the first game, Alshon and Torrey, they had four catches in Washington. Then they go down to the Chiefs. They have 11 catches. So while they're improving together, they're still they still can't sync up. And it's like the wide receivers are thinking one thing and Carson Wentz is thinking another thing and they just haven't meshed yet. Right. And again, it's it's those turnovers and he threw it at, you know, the dude's helmet. And, mm-hmm. you know, he's still there's still these very sophomore year mistakes right. that while, yes, it's good we hang in with the Chiefs and Andy Reid's team and, and uh, largely due to our defense, thank God. Um, that they were in place, and uh, you know, it's it's still it's that's I think the biggest concern that we're going to th- see throughout the rest of the year. Uh, I think we get. I, I think this weekend will be fine. No, oh, I, I, I th- <laughs> oh, trust me. We're going to get to this weekend because, dude, I'm I'm like licking my chops. But like, yeah, we can't we can't hang in there with teams like the Chiefs having those stupid mistakes and miss sack and miss field true. goal. That, yeah. I mean, we're not going to win against teams like that, and those are the teams that we're going to come down to and face in the in the postseason. Now Hopefully. You, you can argue that the game plan was working. If it wasn't for those 10 points off of turnovers, right, and, and some silly mistakes, yeah. that, that the Eagles would have won that game. So you can argue that the game plan was working. But when we talk about running the ball, it's not just about the yards that you get running the ball. It's that the threat that, that it poses, all the, all the trickle-down effect that a run game has. Because now, all of a sudden, if somebody respects your run game, they respect the play-action pass. Carson Wentz has got some phenomenal ball fakes, hiding the ball. I've seen it happen. I've seen glimpses of it, but it's not being used yeah. enough. If you can suck those safeties in a little bit more... Because they know, like a guy like LeGarrette Blunt, while you might be running it in the teeth of the Chiefs' defense, it's going to take two guys to tackle that dude. 
It's important to set the tone on the run game. Use it to set up the pass. Right. You are you are making yourself one dimensional. And by putting Carson Wentz in a position where he has to throw the ball that often, you are inherently asking too much of that kid. Ruben Frank listed a uh, had a great little tweet out about most passing attempts by a quarterback in his first 18 games. I won't go through the entire list, but I'll go through the top three. Andrew Luck, 693 passing attempts. Who's next? Carson Wentz, 692. Yeah, who's next? (laughs) Bradford, 666. That's just way too many. And my biggest fear out of all of this is Doug Peterson will – have one balanced game, like you said, Nat, you don't worry about yeah. the Giants. One balanced game against the Giants, and you saw what the what the Detroit Lions were able to do against them last night. Yeah. But then all of a sudden go right back to passing like he did against Cincinnati, like he did against Green Bay. Like you see all those other times when the Eagles lost and they had a low run ratio, and they Andrew Luck this kid. Well, and, and with Carson being so vulnerable, passing all that time, you have to also remember offensive, our offensive line. Samalo had he that the, three of those sacks – of the six sacks that were against Carson, that they were on him. So again, like he's still vulnerable because our offensive line still hasn't gelled together the way that they should have either. Mm. It's just I'm worried. I'm worried about Carson. I know that he he makes good decisions in the pocket. Week one, he salvaged a lot of the weird plays that Doug called. Um, but at the same time, I'm I'm not comfortable with our offense as much as as good as I feel about our defense. And la- later on, I've got, you know, five – I've, I've, I had all day to sit there and think about this. And is it an issue? Is it, is it not an issue? Are we making too big of a deal out of this? Is it, is it just one game we should forget about it? But I'm going to – I sat there and thought all day, and I have five – Erocks five easy steps – to tweaking the offense, not fixing it. I don't feel like it needs to be fixed. The game plan was kind of working, right? If it wasn't for the turnovers, we wouldn't have went down that Absolutely. Much. But this offense does need some severe tweaking if they expect Carson Wentz to be out there and be a productive quarterback. Coming up, New York Giants. Who saw that game last night? Better yet, who enjoyed that game last night? <laughs> I enjoyed a lot of Eli Manning faces. I mean, anytime you see Eli Manning getting wrecked, he needs some milk. On, on a consistent basis, you know, I, you feel great. But la- last night was the first time I ever felt sorry for a guy. It's like when you watch those accident Kinda videos did. and you know someone's going to get into a wreck, but you're like, eh, should I watch this? I never feel bad for you. Nah. <laughs> ever, nah. ever, ever. Last night was the first time. That was the only first time. But uh, He still goes to bed at night with rings and we don't. True. That is true. <laughs> there's no, there's no feeling But next week, that. no, no. It's, it's wreck shop. But it, it, it's so great to see an offense just be completely inept, and by halftime, the home team, the home crowd's just booing the New York Giants yeah, that was off nice. the field. They they nice. know they're in some trouble. They know they're in some and trouble. And we were talking about that their offensive line during preseason. I was mm-hmm. that, down there for training camp, and I was seeing Eric Flowers get blown back by his own players, and that was a concern then. And it's showing its ugly head, and now they're. You know they're moving. They have moving parts. They they have their uh, guard uh, Justin Pugh out on the outside playing. Uh, Bobby Hart might be out. That local guy and he likes to rip uh, Philly fans too. Don't forget where you come from, where you came from, Justin. Is he ripping? He did. He did. I think last year he talked some smack, didn't he? What have we got he here? A little bit to say. Yeah, oh, let me no. let me let me find exactly what he yeah, had to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, he said it's like a tough tweets. city and blah blah blah. And you're like, you know what, Justin, sit down. Because we don't forget we, where he came we from. We do have have a fairly large live listener uh, following. I'm sure there's a lot of live listeners right now. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a lot of live listeners on Periscope. There's going to be a lot of viewers on YouTube. Find that tweet because I would love for you yeah. guys to go out there and maybe remind this gentleman exactly where he's from and what's going to happen. Oh, you got, are you guys going to get out? You're going to get out there on the ground and do some man on the street and show remind him where he's from. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, yeah. You know, you know. Uh, also, the Bobby Hart, the right tackle, mm-hmm. uh, his brother. Uh, you know, he Bobby Hart shut down his IGM comments because you know people were just attacking him, mm-hmm. and his brother started DMing other. You know, fans out there and say, please leave him alone. He's hurt. Why are you so mad, baby? <laughs> <laughs> but, but speaking of which, like I, like I mentioned, I had all day to kind of look over the stats and, mm. and kind of dig, dig through the crates and, and, and see different tendencies. And we talk about how trash this Giants offensive line is. Come to find out, 
not only is Carson Wentz currently the most hit quarterback in the league, but he is tied for the same amount of sacks given up with eight. So before we go dissing the Giants offensive line, who absolutely deserves it, let's do let's clean up our backyard a little bit right here, right now. And how do we fix this offensive line and protect Carson Wentz coming up against what arguably is a pretty good New York Giants pass rush? Right. Uh, maybe we trade for Allen Barber for oh, Carson. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for that Come desperate, on back, Barber. For that desperate? Uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a tough matchup on on the edge, JPP. You know, he's, he's, he's he, without the hand, I mean mm-hmm. the finger, one right. finger, he's still a danger on the edge. Um, Absolutely. Mike, any ideas? Uh, uh, to be honest, it's going to be a bit of a struggle. I think Samala's going to be struggling a lot. That's, I think that unless – they might need to consider sliding somebody else in there. Yeah, they were saying put Wiz in. Yeah. Put Wiz, Wiz in. Mm-hmm. I, I have no problem putting Wiz in, especially against the Giants. Just me for this game, and they may put Samala in for the next game against the Chargers. But I think for Giants, yeah. But Dougie P it. said he's not going to do anything about that. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. I know that was the thing, but I, but my personal opinion, I think I would put Wiz in. Three of those sacks were on him, so like that, that's that's enough. Yeah, that's definitely, enough. Definitely. Even if yeah, you're right. It's just that one game one change. So I found the uh, I found the quote. Okay. This is right, what let, uh, let, Justin let's, let's Boosie first, said. First, first, give his at. Okay, so he didn't put it on Twitter. Oh. This is an article. It's on NJ.com. I remember reading it last year. He said, I just don't like Philly, to be honest. I'm from there, and every time I go back there, I don't get treated right from my hometown. So it would be nice to go get this one and be able to show my face in my hometown. And then he said, I'll be sitting there with my mom eating dinner, and they'll be doing Eagles chants, or I'll go to the bathroom, and they'll say, go Eagles, down at my shore house. It's like South Jersey, so it's all Philly people. No matter where I go when I'm down there, it's always (laughs) like that. I think Philly fans try to live up to that whole, oh, we threw snowballs at Santa Claus. I think that they try to live up to that. Kids, like, when I was 18 years old, you'd be like, oh, yeah, we're Philly fans. We're ruthless. But they're harmless. Then uh, he keeps going. Then he, oh, oh, but, but wait. There's but wait, more. Yeah. There's more. He says, I was that kid. I can say that because I was that 18-year-old kid who that thought that he was big, bad, tough. I'll come wherever and wear my Philly jersey. Now I don't like that kid that I was. Now that kid's booing me when I come home. <laughs> <laughs> Loser party of one. Your table is ready. <laughs> You can t- you can tell he wasn't a football fan around here because no no and he he went to a high school Justin yeah. just put up a note he went to a high school close to exactly where New Media Studios is right now yeah in Holland yeah you you can't be from this area why is he crying yeah he's like, been uh, abducted he's, by aliens that's he's, why. He, he's he's getting picked on he's getting picked on by his own family and he can't and he can't deal with it well then his starting cornerback Eli Apple is a giant fan uh, so. Maybe uh, he's an Eagle fan. I'm sorry. Oh, he's an Eagles fan. A pr- a prior Mark Herzlick, who's who I, I I don't think he dressed for last night's game because I saw him in street clothes. But he the, he's another diehard Eagles fan. Up so you That's know some Eagles blood in there. And what they didn't do this year or or yet, I'm I'm kind of surprised. Right? Remember in the first season or first game of the year, they took the quarterback off the practice squad from the Redskins. Right. The next game, they took a cornerback off the practice squad from the Kansas City Chiefs. Maybe they're so unconcerned. With this New York Giants team, they're like, nah, got three days. fuck it, we good, we good, we don't, we don't need that. I'm kind not of stuff. used to these curses; they're freaking me out a little. No, <laughs> you, you, I'm like, where's the dumb button? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nat- Natalie is from the uh, land of of uh, the land of the uh, what are they called? The FCC. FCC. The land FCC. of the FCC. No, there's, ju- there's just Justin behind the glass here. I mean, even even Trox brought in a fart gun. We're so the I, land I, of the F U C K. Yeah, <laughs> I have to say. I mean, these studios are awesome. Like, it's a really great setup that you have here. Shout out well, that, to Justin. Well, well, well thank studios. you. Absolutely. Yeah. We're, we're going to be taking your phone calls uh, starting at 8.30. The number to call in is 215-515-2924. So going against this New York Giants defense, who's – Legit. They, they, they got a legit defense. What improvements in the offense besides the obvious run game? And you can speak on it. But what do you need to see out of either A, Doug Peterson, or B, this offense that's going to make the Eagles successful at home for the first time in 2017 at Lincoln Financial Field? I just, I just need a balanced attack. I don't need to see, like, 50 passes. I don't, maybe not even 40, 40 passes. I mean, a balanced attack. You know, it's like going 10 rounds without throwing a body blow or a hook. You know, throw some blount, hit him with some uh, Darren Sproles, and make, sprinkle in some small wood for some seasoning. Small wood for seasoning. For some I, seasoning. I, I, we, just have, <laughs> we just have had n- not enough snaps to see what these guys can actually do. It's hard to, you know, judge a running back 
by the, the amount of snaps that we've seen from these guys. Does Doug's running game also kind of strike you as bland? Doug is bland. Yeah. I don't think Doug he is, has yeah. one. Doug, Doug is bland. He rocks a vibe. I don't think he figure, has figured one out yet. That's why. I don't think he, we even have an identity I mean, his, for this team yet. Doug doesn't have and an And his identity. history yeah. here, <laughs> you know, prior to his time as head coach, he was, the, he was a quarterback's coach. Mm. So that's what he knows. So he thinks, I mean – in my opinion, he thinks that he's going to come in here and he'll turn Carson Wentz into this franchise quarterback, which would be great, but you can't neglect the rest of the team. You can't right. neglect the rest of the mm-hmm. offense. Why the NFL isn't really a running back heavy product anymore, so they say, like they used to. Mm-hmm. Four of the leading rushers in the NFL right now are rookie quarterbacks, one of them being Dalvin Cook, who we could have had. Uh, so that also that also is something that absolutely uh, it makes my blood pressure rise every time I watch him run up the field with the ball because I'm like, he could have been ours. And rumor had it. I mean, I read a tweet. I don't know the validity of the tweet, but I heard that there was an option to trade up to get Dalvin Cook. I'm sure. I'm sure there was. But how he didn't want to give up a fourth round pick. But a fourth round. Yeah, but a fourth round pick. By the way, who is a running back who is currently on IR, who really shouldn't even even had a roster spot coming out of training camp. Trying to get the next Darren Sproles. That was totally just how he's saving face, by the way. Agree. Yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. Because like, it... <laughs> no, no, no. Those, those, <laughs> those, those mid-round picks. People crucified me because I started picking on the mid-round picks and like, mm-hmm. look, I, if you nail the first one, fantastic. If Sidney Jones ends up being that shutdown, lockdown corner, that top fifteen pick that he was supposed to be coming out of college, fantastic. The back half of the draft is where you build your team. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when people are just like, oh, it's, it's a fifth round, it's a fourth round. Or no, the, if you hit on those middle picks, mm-hmm. that's where you save money for the future years. You get, fu- you get future starters in the mid to late rounds. You are saving money for the cap the next following season. We got Jalen Mills in the seventh round, who is now our starter for now. Um, but you know, you're saving money, so you just can't not hit on these picks. A historically deep running back draft oh. class according to Howie Roseman and he picks mm. out probably the most pigeonholed running back <laughs> in that entire draft class and we said it on this podcast week one yeah like look this can either be like the running back Voltron where you got so many of them <laughs> they fucking combine to make this awesome powerful fighting machine or none of these guys are going to get enough carries to the point where they get in any sort of rhythm. And also, too, you're kind of Doug's kind of tipping his hand with the play calling based off of personnel. Like it, Brian Westbrook said it on on this afternoon with Mikey Miss. Like if it's 21 yeah. personnel, it's running between the tackles. It, it's it's center or guard, pick one. You can, but it's Legarrette Blunt. Yeah. If it's Sproles, it's tipping your hand. If Who? Where was he last? Where was he this game? Who's that? Blunt. Like Eric Blunt. Nowhere. I, th- th- <laughs> this jersey was <laughs> dude, clean <laughs> as anything. Not, 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 not by his choice. No, yeah. no, I know. It's yeah. just, it's a, I would have liked to see more of him this week but, as well. But also, the, I was seeing a lot of heavy packages with uh, LeGarrette Blunt last, the last game against the Redskins. Right. And then Doug was actually trying to pass out of those uh, situations. So he, Which caught him off guard. Yeah, but it's also looking like he's going to start doing it. Because he did it this week again with Blunt on a, Heavy package, and he and he threw the blount. So, it, I I don't think Doug's play calling can survive um, at this pace. Without he's, our, he's got to switch it up. He's got to he's got to get back in the in the crates. Our I mean, defense is going to bail him out. That's exactly. his good, that's his saving grace right yeah, now right. because yeah. offensively, there's no way we would have survived. With, that, you know, this and, past week, and that's something we didn't even really touch on yet. We've been we've been doing so much bitching and rightfully so about the run game and Doug's play calling. Let, let's tip our hat. Let's give a little uh, round of applause to the fucking defense, the way they played. Getting after hey. Alex Smith. Hey, they, girl, hey. They were so disruptive against, against that Kansas City offense. They were in the backfield the entire time. Those guys are going to eat Eli uh, Manning for lunch on Sunday. I mean, think about all the guys who've had sacks. I mean, now Chris Long got a sack in there. Kendrick's got a sack in there. Uh, you, know, you know, everyone's getting sacks. So, Unfortunately, I mean, that, they didn't get any turn- turnovers. They didn't. Yeah, and yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I think that would have. I think that would have helped us a lot. Exactly. I'm, I'm hoping Curry gets a sack. He missed that one opportunity. Oh, I'm, so huge. Huge. I'm still pissed at huge. that. Huge. You can't miss that. Uh-huh. You know, well, for the money he's getting paid, you got to have that sack. Only. What pissed me off? Say it with your chest. <laughs> Say it with my chest. What pissed me off was that he said on the post game. He said, "If that ever happened again." I would make sure that he doesn't run away from me. I'm like, then what happened the first time then? Like, really, bro? You're getting paid to do this. Sack the freaking quarterback. 
We, we, we appreciate everybody that's calling in. We're going to get to the phone calls in a second. Right now we have 100 live listeners coming in from Germany, Chile, Canada. We really appreciate the support. Chile. 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 Oh, yeah. Wow. We go international here at 4th of John. We're, we're coast to coast from a, <laughs> from a humble little studio. Chili's and Applebee's. And Applebee's wow. and TGI Fridays. Listen, man, we, we appreciate all the support that you guys are, are, are giving us. We really do. We're going to get to the phones in just a second. Before we do... Let's real quick touch on the tail. We're gonna get into this more, but I, but I, I am like, say it with your chest. I am staring at my ceiling.